Welcome to Testing AI. In this channel, I break down different AI tools and keep you up to date with the AI world. If you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe. In today's video, I'm going to see how well ChatGPT reacts when I try to convert a piece of code from JavaScript to Python. The first example I'm going to use is from this website Mailtrap, where I have a piece of code which sends an email using JavaScript. The second one is from Twilio, where there's a piece of code in JavaScript which sends a WhatsApp message. The third example is from BufferNow.com, where I'm going to use some JavaScript code which creates a bookmark. If you're learning a new programming language, sometimes you don't understand the syntax, so ChatGPT might be helpful in converting a piece of functionality in your preferred programming language and convert it to one to a new one you're trying to use. The first example has all the information you need in a JavaScript function. You have the host name, the username, password, and all the information you need to send in the email. I want to see how this converts to Python. It actually figures out what I'm trying to do and it recommends me a, a library in Python to use and then use and imports the library itself and writes the function. As you can see, it recommends me a Python library, smtplib, to use and provides me the Python code. It also tells me something which it cannot perform, like the then clause in the original JavaScript code. There's This section is what it's talking about, but it cannot, it, it cannot convert that to Python directly. So to get the same kind of behavior, it's using a try-catch block to catch any exceptions while sending the email and it sends the email using this function. This looks like a usable piece of code and I can keep that aside. All right. The second example is a piece of JavaScript code which will send a WhatsApp message. So this is the example I'm gonna use. You do need to have these two pieces of information ready for this code to be functional, but I can still keep this aside for use later. All right, the last example I'm gonna use is to create a bookmark using JavaScript. So this one is special because bookmarking is a very browser specific action because Python isn't exactly a browser specific language. Like I expected, it's telling me that it's not possible to directly convert this to Python as it is designed to interact with the browser. Since it can't convert the code directly, it's giving me two approaches I can use. One option would be to use something like Selenium to automate the web browser. The second approach would be to store all the bookmarks in the database and then provide a UI interface for the user to add or edit the bookmarks. It provided me an example to use the PyQt library. I think that's how it's pronounced because I've never used it personally to automate the web browser and add a bookmark. It does require you to have the browser being open and visible for it to actually work on it. This still seems like a functional piece of code.
I would say these pieces of code that it provided is around 75% there. You do need to edit them for the last 25% to make them functional. But overall, I think it does a pretty good job at converting code from a language you don't know to a language you're familiar with. I hope you I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, please add a like. I hope this video I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, make sure to add a like and hit subscribe. Till the next one. Thank you. I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, make sure to add a like and hit subscribe. Thank you.